I love jelly bellies. It's obvious, obviously, but um, if you've never had a jelly belly, my wife did not know that she liked jelly beans until I bought jelly bellies. And I was doing okay. I had my own bags of jelly bellies until she tried buttered popcorn. And then suddenly, if I'm holding jelly bellies in my hand, all of the buttered popcorn, I have not tasted buttered popcorn in months. Because if I hold them in my hand for any length of time, she can get, it is like heat-seeking missile. She will track down that buttered popcorn and yank it out of my hand. Years ago, I heard a pastor talk about how he gave his son Skittles and then asked his son for a few Skittles, and his son refused to give him any Skittles. And that was his comparison to how God gives us things and just asks for a portion back. Well, I've realized something. That's wrong. Pastors love to talk about tithing. They love to talk about 10%. And by the way, just on a side note, I have no idea what anyone gives. I don't want to know what you give. That's between you and God, not you and me. And so if you think I know what you give, I don't. And if you tell me what you give, I still won't want to know. So, and I'm so dumb, I'll forget anyway. But anyway, so the truth is between you and God. But here's what I know. Everything you have is God's. God has gifted you with everything that you have, whether it's a talent, whether it is a, uh, a financial gift, whether it's your home, whether it's your car. Everything you have is a gift from God. So here's the question. How are you using what God has given you in this life? Or are you hoarding what God has given you and saying, well, well, I deserve this and God is an evil ruler and how dare he ask for anything. And do you think this is yours? Or are you like the guy who's like, well, I'll give him that percentage of my Skittles, but you know, he can't have the rest of my life. That's not what it means when the Bible talks about being a caretaker of God. So today we're going to talk about what does it mean to be God's caretakers? And so here's a couple side notes for you. Are you growing as a person? Or are you the Dead Sea? Do you know why the Dead Sea is the Dead Sea? Because everything flows into the Dead Sea and nothing flows out. So it becomes saltier and saltier and saltier. We know people like that, right? Everything comes in. And nothing goes out. You know, a lot of Christians come to church. They hear God's word. They hear good sermons. They watch sermons on TV. They listen to Christian radio. But they never allow God to use them to bless other people. Listen, God doesn't want you to just survive as a person. He wants you to thrive. And the only way to do that is to use the gifts God's given you to be generous to other people. You know, they've done study after study that people who are generous are happier. People who are generous are growing. People who are stingy, well, you know them, right? But you know, nobody thinks they're stingy. You know, Ebenezer Scrooge did not think he was stingy. Nobody thinks they are. But we need to always ask the question, God, am I using the jelly beans you've given me for the things you want me to use them for? Now, number one, God expects us to manage his resources. I keep propping that door open and it keeps closing. And I don't know if there's a reason. If there's a reason, it's okay. But I just noticed that again. All right. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. Now you've probably heard it, talents, but talents doesn't translate into English the same way. And, and scholars argue over how much money it is. So let's just go with a bag of gold. How many would like me to give them a bag of gold today? How many would like them, me to give them this bag of yeah, that's not happening. All right, so <laughs> neither one of those things. To one, <clears throat> he gave five bags of gold. How many people would like five bags of gold? Okay, good. To another, he gave one bag, and listen to this, each according to his ability. Now, so here's the key in that. You are not responsible for what the other person does with their gifts. You're not to look at them and go, well, they have talents they're not using. No, no. You're to look. And you're not to say, well, they're not doing much, so I'm not going to do much. Because maybe you're a five-bag Christian. Or maybe you're a one-bag Christian. All right? So then it continues. Then he went away on his journey. The man who'd received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave five more bags. So the one with two bags gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole. 
watched Netflix, binge watched every TV show he could find, decided I wasn't going to talk to people anymore. I'm just going to complain all the time. I'm going to order in. I'm not even going to go to Publix anymore. I'm going to have them deliver to my house. I'm going to bury all my gifts in a hole because I helped people one time and boy, that didn't work out well. So I'm going to do what I want. Sorry, that's not in the Bible. I just kind of sidestepped there. And he hid his master's money. So, so the jelly beans aren't his? Do so you mean my gifts and my talents and my car and my finances and my really cool car that you have? It's not mine? Yeah, that's what this means. But I just thought it was a percentage. No, it's just you. The Christian life is about sacrifice. God, everything is yours. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. By the way, that's all God asks you. Just be faithful with the things you have. Are you, are you being faithful with what God's given you? You might be a five-bag Christian. You might be a one-bag Christian. But are you being faithful with the gifts he's given you? Then he says, come and share in your master's happiness. Oh, i got to say something about this side, side note. Heaven happiness? Okay, have you ever had a day where you did something and you just like, you like went to Disney World maybe. And you took the kids, or, or even better, if you really want to be happy, you took the grandkids. Right? I've heard that so much better. Right? And, and, and all of a sudden in the middle of that, or maybe you're watching a, a, a sunset or maybe you're watching a sunrise or you get to go to the mountains and you see the beauty and then all of a sudden you just have this overwhelming happiness. It's just a touch of what God's happiness is. So he says, enter into your master's happiness. And then it continues. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few jelly beans. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So what they do? God gave them their bag of jelly beans. They multiplied them. And then he gave them more. Luke 16 says this, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Time out. Have you ever hired a contractor to do something for you and they didn't show up? I, I see that face, yes. Right? One of the smartest things you can do is hire somebody to do a small task and not make excuses for them not doing it. Hire them for a small task and see how they do. Or talk to a neighbor who's had them do something. Why? Because if they are faithful with a little project, they'll be faithful with a big project. That's why they say, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Have you heard that? Why is that? Because you know who's been faithful. We also have problems. We have inertia. You know what inertia is? Inertia is what, when you are in your car and you're going forward and you hit the brakes, your body wants to go forward. Why? Because it's been going forward. But it's the other way when you start the car, when you push the gas and you first take off, especially when you're with Rodney, you can't get your head off of the back of the seat, right? Right? And so, you don't drive that way, I know. That's the pastor. Uh, uh, anyway, so, so, right? And so what's happening? Inertia. Here's the thing. If you have not been using your gifts to bless others, it takes a lot to start going out of your way to be a blessing. But we all know somebody in our lives that was like the little kid who gave to us when we didn't deserve it, who went out of their way and inconvenienced themselves to bless us when we didn't deserve it. But it takes work. It takes inconvenience. It takes struggle. But anybody who is trusted with much Excuse me, very little can be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with little will be dishonest with much. So when somebody doesn't follow through, when somebody doesn't keep their word, don't give them more responsibility. 
realize, okay, if they can't be faithful with little, maybe I shouldn't give them more. Now, sometimes we think, well, maybe the reason they weren't faithful is because I didn't give them an important title or didn't give them an important job. Listen, if you are working somewhere, don't wait for your title. You be faithful with what you're given because the Bible says you're working for God, not man. So you say, God, I'm working for you, not this doofus. Oh, sorry. Not that person who's my boss, right? And some of you have doofus's boss, right? right? I'm not going to... Don't nod because your boss might be here today, okay? Or watching online, they see your head and you, uh, this is your last day at work. I'm sorry, we'll miss you. All right? Dishonest with much. But if you have been trustworthy and handling worthy wealth, who will trust you with true riches? So here's the question. What gifts has God given you? Are you a, a soup maker? Are you a donut bringer? Are you an encourager? Can, can you send a note to somebody, a text to somebody? One of the things when I'm talking to couples all the time, and when I talk to newlyweds, I say, listen, text each other every day, but not just what you need to do. You're not business partners. Text what you appreciate, what you like, what you enjoy about each other. Why? Because... If you're not careful, you become business partners and you're worried about these four things. Where are we going to get things done? Where are we going to go next? What are we having for dinner? What are we having for dinner? What are we having for dinner? If you look at your text and all it says what we're having for dinner, you really need to repent today and ask Jesus to forgive you, okay? Because you have a whole bunch of gifts. How many are you using? And I'm not just talking about church. Listen, we should be using our gifts here, but that's, this is not the only place. We, we partner together here to help people find their way home to Christ. So a friend who brings somebody who hasn't been to church in years comes in, gets welcomed at the door, gets a cup of coffee, drops their kids off at the children, with the children's ministry, shows up in here, and there's all kind of people who have already encouraged them before the pastor even gets up here, which is a good thing because some people are like, well, I liked it until he got up. You ever known somebody dishonest? When somebody shows you that they're dishonest, don't trust them. And the Bible's very clear about that. Whoever will be dishonest with little will be dishonest with much. So watch for that. I'll never forget years ago, I interviewed a guy to come work for us. And of course, I've been thinking about this a little bit more. And uh, 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 the guy was great. And Mike, you might remember this. The guy was great. Everything he did, he knew what he was doing. I mean, he was sharp. He was very charismatic. And I'll never forget, we sat down at the table and he said, I just went to Orlando and back. And I said, oh, really? He goes... I said, uh, I said, man, but it's a pain to wait for those tolls. He goes, no, no, I just ran them all. He was dishonest with little, so guess who didn't get hired? Now, I don't know if he ever knew that that's why I didn't hire him. I actually, I think I told him. Because if somebody shows you they're going to be dishonest in something little, they'll be dishonest with much. So a guy who wasn't patient enough to pay any toll, and then not only to not do it, to... He knew he didn't do it. He bragged about not doing it. Now, that's an extra level of stupidity, right? I would like this job, but I've been dishonest in these things. Let me tell you about it. And bragging about it like it was some kind of prize. And I went, oh, no. Talented, smart, had all the right stuff, charismatic, bad character. Don't hire that person. All Christians are God's managers, Everything we have is on loan from God. We are to manage everything on earth to use it in serving him. We are responsible for all the time, talent, and resources he has given us. Now, that doesn't mean you don't need to rest. I'll talk about that later. But you need to say yes to the things God wants you to say yes with. Number two, our view of God impacts our management. Now, Steve made me change this story because I used a violent story last night and everybody almost cried through the rest of the service. So I won't use that story again. Have you recovered yet, Michelle, from that story? I will tell you, there's another story where the monkeys actually got coconuts and killed their cruel owner. So it's like a retribution for the story I told last night. But here's the story I read this morning, and I thought, this is a great story. My dad was a contractor, if you didn't know it. So I love this story. So it was a contractor getting ready to retire, and he hired... Uh, he had hired a guy, and the guy had worked with him for years. And so the owner said, listen, I'm going to be retiring soon, but we got one more house to build. It's a two-story, beautiful house on a big lot, and, and, and this will be our final house together. And so the contractor went in, and of course, they worked side by side most of the time. But a lot of times, the contractor did his thing, and his workman did his other thing. 
So the contractor noticed that the workman's heart just really wasn't in his work. He noticed that, you know, even down the hallway, he didn't line the lights up straight, and he didn't cut the board straight, and even the, even the, the, the uh, baseboards around the house weren't cut evenly, and it was just doing shoddy workmanship. And normally, the guy even thought, you know, normally my boss would kind of get on to me right now, but he's really not getting on to me. And the boss watched him and thought, you know what, he's just not motivated. And he put the toilet in, and the toilet still rocked. And then they went to do the driveway, and the, the workman was in charge of the driveway and he didn't even smooth the driveway they poured the concrete and it just stayed there and it was the worst looking driveway ever and they finally finished the house and the owner of the business came to the man and said here's the key this is your house now here's the truth about that story god has given you gifts and talents and what you and i don't realize is we're building our house We're helping bring people into his kingdom in heaven. We're helping people to find their way home. And the Bible even says that when you do what's faithful here on earth, he will make and even reward you in heaven. And people say all the time, what does that mean? And I want to say this, I I don't know. But it means it'll reward us. How do I know that? Because listen to this. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came, master, he said. Now listen to this. Can you imagine talking to somebody this way? I knew that you were a hard man. You harvested where you have not sown. Uh, There's another word for that. You steal. You're dishonest. You get things in our ears. And you gather where you've not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. By the way, the reason that some people don't want to say, God, everything I have is yours, because they think that God is just going to take it all from them and they don't deserve anything and... We don't understand that when we surrender our lives to God, our lives are full of joy and peace. It's when we hoard our lives and we become like Ebenezer Scrooge and we're grumpy and we can't figure out why there is no joy. It's because we've not used the gifts God's given us in the right way and become the dead sea. So I was afraid and went out and hid it in the ground, watched Netflix all the time and stayed away from people and I quit coming to church and I definitely wasn't going to help even if I showed up. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, listen to this, you wicked, lazy servant. By the way, this idea is is harmful. It's the idea that the guy was harmful. So you knew that I harvested where I had not sown and gathered where I have not gathered, gathered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So let's look at some investments. How are you investing your time? Is there anybody who can say, they helped me, they encouraged me, they blessed me? Because you all know somebody who did that for you. But can anybody say that you were that person in them, your time? How are you spending your time? Are you investing it in other people? By the way, I will tell you something about time. If you don't schedule it, it won't happen. Did you know that in my phone, even right now, you can look at next week and it will say, there are days it will say, call this person already for next week. Because I know, oh, I got to call them. Because you know what happens if I don't put it in my phone? I don't call them. I forget stuff all the time. Is that a shocker to anybody here? The fact that I lost my phone at the beginning of service? That was just an illustration for you. Are you investing the mind God gave you? Do you ever take time to listen to an encouraging podcast, an encouraging sermon, somebody who lifts you up so that you can go out of your way to bless other people? Are you always watching negative stuff that just drags you down? Are you investing in things that give negative return, literally negative return? Are you investing to grow the talents that you have? We all need to grow, and the only way we can do that is by investing in other people. Now, we're going to be offering three classes next year. Uh, it's, it's, we said four, but it's really three classes and a trip. So next year, we'll, we'll take a mission trip. That's four, but, but we do the one-on-one class here. We talk about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be part of our church. We do a two-on-one class where you learn about the four habits of the Christian life. We do a three-on-one class, which we haven't done in a while because we didn't have anybody sign up for it the last couple of times I've offered it, but I'm going to offer it again this year. I'm going on faith that some of you will say, I want to know what my spiritual gift is, and we talk about spiritual gifts. And so if you want to grow in those areas, that is a great way to grow. Finally, number three, God holds us accountable 
for our gifts. Now, I know you may not be able to see me well, Randy. I don't know if they're going to be able to see on TV, but I'm going to show you something that I learned. Now, years ago, many of you don't know, I was a drummer. I was actually um, asked to play drums um, when I came out of, was in college. I was asked to... I was asked to play drums on a cruise ship. Yeah, David's excited. I was asked to play drums on a cruise ship, and um, to make a long story short, I didn't go. But um, when I first learned to play drums, I thought it was that drum playing was about as many notes as I could get in. So I'll never forget, I did a drum solo. I was probably in ninth grade, and I played it for my band director, and it sounded like this. And here's what my band director said. It sounded like a luau. So a few years later, I became friends with a guy who was a professional drummer. And he did studio work and drummer and band. He said, you know, Eric, sometimes you have to know what not to play. So he said, even when you're doing a solo, it's better to do a solo where... Where you're not trying to play everything you can play. Instead of, you're just filling the space. Right? So, now here's what I want to tell you about that. So, here's the truth. Some of us have gotten burned out. And freaked out. Because we went to do what, we were excited. We said, God, I want to do what you want me to do. And we just filled as many notes as we could. Did as much as we could, but never took the time to say, is that what God wants me to do? You know, one of the dumbest slash best things I did this year was I sent a note out to our different team leaders. And I don't know if I've sent it to all of them yet, but most of them. And I said, are you willing to serve another year? Now, you have to realize that when I sent this out, I thought two things. You're an idiot, Eric, and they're all going to say no. And then it's just going to be you at church, and that's it. It's just going to be, I'll show up every Sunday and go, good to see you. We don't have sound. Thanks for coming. Right? Everyone that I've asked so far said, yes, I'm willing to serve another year. Now, let me tell you why that's awesome. Number one is there's people willing to serve and lead teams. Number two is this. They had the opportunity to say, I don't feel like I'm supposed to play this year. Or God's called me to do it. Because when you recognize what God has called you to do, remember, love is inconvenient. But when you realize what God has called you to do, even when it's difficult, you still go forward. And you don't try to do everything. You try to do what you're called to do. So I have a job to do. Other people have a job to do. Now, I will tell you as a pastor, I love it when people are excited about their ministries. But one of my jobs is to keep the sheep in their pens. And Dave, this was way before you. But years ago, I will never forget, I had a music team. They were so excited about the music. They were so inspired by the music that they literally took over the whole stage. To the point that, do you remember this, Johnette? I could not get on the stage to talk. And I was like, I had to like wait for them to clear an area and they only gave me this much room. And I remember thinking, um, do they not realize anybody else is here? Because here's the deal. When people are excited about their ministry, they will expand it and expand it and expand it. But guess who gets to tell them they got to get back in their pen? Now, sometimes people get mad at me when I say, you know, you need to give another group a little bit of room. You can't take over the whole church with your ministry. I know that decorating is important, Michelle, but you can't decorate everywhere, right? Okay. <laughs> she got really still. That was funny. Um, by the way, she did the wedding yesterday. It was so beautiful. And look, it's, you can't even tell they were here. That was wonderful. I was so excited for you. All right. Now, here's what happened to that servant, though. Why? Because he didn't trust God. He held on to his jelly beans, and he said, these are mine. And this is what happened to him. This is a warning to all of us. So take it for how it reads and apply it exactly how it reads. Listen. So take the bag of gold from him. Give it to the one who has 10 bags. I don't know about you. That does not seem fair at all. But God's not about fairness. That's why we have mercy. 
For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless, remember that word right there is harmful or mean, servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now people have said, is that hell? And I go, ah, maybe. This, this, uh, this chapter talks about the, the ladies lighting their lamps. It talks about the goats and the sheep. But here's the deal. If you're a believer, being a Christian is not just knowing about Jesus and saying, I'll give you a little bit of my life. It's understanding that who you are is who God made you to be, and you surrender that to Him. And then you do what He's called you to do. So don't be afraid that it means overplaying and exhausting yourself. What it means is, ready? Doing exactly what He's called you to do, even when it's inconvenient. In the middle of the wedding yesterday, I said to the couple, because <laughs> I'm so mean, because I was talking to them about love being inconvenient, and I said, imagine if today, I said, I said to Randy before the wedding, Randy, you remember this? They like gasped, the couple did. I said, imagine if before the wedding, I said to Randy, Randy, I'm tired, I don't feel like coming all the way down to the church, so I'm just going to have you put me on the screen as the pastor to do the wedding. You should have seen their faces, they were like, what? I said, because... Here's what you need to know. Love is inconvenient. It was harder for me to come here and do the wedding than to stay at home and do it virtually. If you want to love people, you have to show up for them. Did you hear me? It's inconvenient. Sometimes the people don't respond the way you want them to. Sometimes you will be tired. But the tiredness is a, God, I've done what you've called me to do today. You don't compare yourselves to other people. You don't say, well, they're not doing it. Well, it's not your, their bag of gold is not yours. You invest where you're supposed to invest and do it joyously. Listen to the last verse, Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Think of that person in your life that blessed you. Was it convenient for them? Did they have to go out of their way to be a blessing? Did they have to think outside the box? Did they have to fight through? We don't know. Maybe they had to fight through some things even to get there to help you. I'm sure they had bad days too, but they still went out of their way. We all know a teacher like that. We all know a person who we care about, maybe a family member who went out of their way to show us they cared. So here's my final question for you today. I don't know how many bags of jelly bellies you have. But can you? Say, God, if you want me to give away all the popcorn butter flavored jelly beans, that's what I'll do. I like them, but I love that person more. What in your life do you need to go out of your way to give? Whether it's financial, whether it's time-wise, whether it's encouragement, whether it's a bowl of soup, a cup of cold water in his name, what has God called you to do? On this day where we're sending boxes around the world... Just little jelly beans. But God will use them to multiply it. So don't ever be surprised when you use what God has for you that you don't find more joy and more jelly beans. Because that's how God works. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never surrendered all the jelly beans to Him, then I encourage you to do that today. Jesus, I know you died and rose again for me. I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I'm broken. And I surrender my life to you knowing that you died and rose again. If you in your heart do that, we do it through prayer. But it doesn't have to be a prayer. It's really a heart change. We make that out loud through prayer. I'd love to talk to you either if you're watching online or here after the service today. If you're a Christian and the truth is as I was talking, you thought of some things that you kind of have been going, mine. Just be honest with God and go, God. I'll do what you want me to do. What do you want me to do? And when you surrender to him, you'll find joy, even in the inconvenience, even in the uncomfortable moments. He will bless you. Let's pray. Father, like everyone here, there are times when I serve where I'm frustrated and irritated and aggravated and all the negative emotions take over. And then I remember that I only have the ability to serve because of what you've given me. So, Lord, help me to be a faithful servant in all that you've given. And, Lord, for those times that maybe I've wasted a talent or not done things the right way, I know you forgive me. But, Father, I pray also, Lord, train me, train us.
to use the gifts you've given us. Show us how to be a blessing more and more, not just here in our church, but in this community and around the world. I pray we continue to bless others. Thank you for those who use their gifts every week to make us feel blessed. We thank you for them. Lord, continue to bless them on their frustrated days. Lord, thank you for working in us and giving us all that we have. We're so blessed to live in this life. We thank you for these moments today. In Jesus' name, amen.